The Great Gospel of John Revealed from the Lord through the inner word to Jacob Lorber Volume 8, Chapter 38 Jesus advises to pray for the deceased. The Lord says, Thus, such spirits, although they are not of a good and pure kind, cannot become dangerous for man, and it is good to pray for such souls. Because the prayer of a soul who is filled with love and compassion and in full trusting love in me has a good influence on such truly poor souls in the beyond, for it forms a certain element of life's ether around them, in which they can see, as in a mirror, their faults and shortcomings, are improving themselves, and by that they can come more easily to the light of life. And I am offering you this possibility myself, so that you can truly benefit your deceased brothers and sisters. But then, how should you pray for them? This is quite easy. When you are praying, you should not be of the opinion that by that you can stir me up to greater mercy, since I truly am endless, more merciful than all the best and most loving people of the whole world together. But submit faithfully the gospel to them, out of the true foundation of love of your heart, thus in your heart. Then they will hear it and will also conform themselves to it. And in this way, you will also announce the gospel to those who are truly poor of spirit, which will be a great benefit for them. All the other kinds of prayer and rattling off of prayers does not help a deceased person in the least, but will rather harm him, because he only will be offended when he hears it, since such prayers for the souls of the deceased have to be paid with great offerings, especially as this is the custom with the Pharisees according to the law. The manner of praying for the deceased and the caring for their spiritual poverty, like I have shown you just now, is certainly a fruitful blessing for them. On the other hand, a costly paid for prayer of the Pharisees is for them a curse, from which they quickly are fleeing away and which they deeply despise. Do remember and observe this well as my good advice given to you, for by that you will acquire true, great, mighty and grateful friends in the great world on the other side, who will not ever leave you, neither on this nor on the other side, if ever you would be in need. Such friends will then be your true protective spirits and will always be concerned for the well-being of their benefactors. But you can only acquire them when you are caring and are anxious about them in the manner that I have indicated to you. For that, you do not have to wait for old strongholds and farms. But you always can do that for as many deceased souls as you can think of, because your faith, your true love and compassion, and the truth out of me are reaching still endlessly much farther than the great spheres of the great cosmic man that was described to you. Because you are not only my created beings, but you are for me, your father, endlessly much more. And the great man of creation is not even a tangible point of life, of existence, in the smallest nerve of life of your little toe. All this is, of course, only spiritual, or from the point of view of the deepest truth. Truly, I say to you, a great influence is intended for you, of which even you yourselves will only perfectly know the scope of when you will live and work with me in my eternal kingdom in one Father's house. Because now, all this is only a wonderful dream to you, just like with children of pious parents. However, what I am telling you here is deep and godly truth. As I am possessing all power and sovereignty in heaven and on this tiny earth, so also all of you who believe in me and love me above all should perfectly process it, because the children of a father may not be less than endlessly perfect, just like their father is. Mostly, it looks quite different with people on this earth, especially when the father is spoiling his children too much. But truly, this is absolutely never the case with me, for I know since eternity what my children need. Well now, I've given you a little foretaste, so that you should know who I really am, and who you are, and who you actually still have to become much more. Therefore, act always according to my word, then you will easily reach that what you should reach according to my fatherly words, 
because a surer and more powerful guarantee than what I am myself, the whole of eternity and infinity does not have. But as said, remember it very well from the deepest bottom of your life, otherwise I have said it to you in vain. Do not look for any reward in this world for the little sacrifices that you are giving me, for truly then you would not be my children but children of this world and earth, which is a bad footstool for my love and my earnest. However, perform all the things that you do out of true inner love for me, your father. Then I will surely know with what I have to prepare a true joy in return for my beloved children. Truly, truly, I say to you, no human eye has ever seen no human ear has ever heard, and no human sense organ has ever felt what I am preparing for my children, who truly love me with a simple heart as their father. But also, this I am saying to all of you, I absolutely will not have myself be dragged along next to this world, because it will be completely one thing or completely the other, for such halfway is something that belongs to the dark heathens, and therefore it also produces bad fruits. Because what use will it be to a person if he would possess all the treasures of the world, but thereby would suffer great harm to his soul? Therefore, always be concerned about treasures that cannot be eaten up by moths and cannot be corroded by rust. Then that will always be the best for you. So remember also this advice very well and observe it. Then already on this earth you will have a good existence, as well as the other people who will believe your words. All the rest has to pine away, so that the flesh would not become too proud. For I am the only one as Lord, and I am always doing what I want according to my eternal wisdom, even if the world would scream for murder and fire, as strong and as loud as it wants. Once about this, and then again about that, and I will never listen to its vain bawling. But that which my true children and friends will present me, I will also listen to and will easily and quickly correct that which is evil. However, all that which is called and which is world must from now on be chastised a hundred times more than has ever been the case since the beginning of the world. Also this is my word, and the time will teach the people that I have not spoken about these words in vain. Woe to all those who are lusting for the world and are opposing my will, because this earth is a cradle for my children and these cannot become capable without the rod of chastisement. And when softer warnings do not help, then sharper and more serious ones will be used, which will then be my concern. 